This tutorial is about how to get Mac audio onto a flash-based broadcasting channel such as Yahoo, Ustream, Stick'em, or in this case, Mogulus. We will be using a program called Audio Hijack Pro from a company called Rogue Amoeba. You can find it at Mac Update Version Tracker or go directly to the Rogue Amoeba website at www.rogueamoeba.com. As you will see, the audio from your Mac will be sent to Mogulus through a program called Soundflower, which is automatically installed once you install Audio Hijack Pro. Let's begin to configure our system. Open Audio Hijack Pro. The first thing we want to do is configure our microphone. Normally you would configure your microphone using the flash settings in Mogulus, but since we want to use the audio from other applications along with the microphone, we will route everything through Audio Hijack. Go to the bottom left hand corner of the Audio Hijack window and click the plus sign. An icon will appear in the column above that and next to it it will say select a source. Go to the input tab and under source type select audio device. Then to the right of that select the port which your microphone is attached to. In my case it is built in input line in. Next click the effects tab and here's where it gets a little tricky. In this window where it says click here to insert effect, click your mouse, select 4FX effect, then go to the third line down and select audio device output. When the dialog window appears, go to device and select Soundflower 2 channel. Default you can't change, it'll just stay at default. Close the dialog box and your microphone is ready to go. To test if your mic is working, go to the upper left hand corner and click hijack. If it is, the blue bars will be moving in this little indicator window here. If you accidentally create the wrong audio device in this window, just click on the device you created, hit the delete key, it'll go away, and then start over. Next we will choose the applications we want to use during the broadcast and add them to the setup. Click the plus sign again to create a new source. Go to the input tab and under source type select application. If the application you want to use is currently running or has been running recently, click on the select button. Move down and select iTunes from the list. It will then appear in the left hand column. I think an easier way to add applications is to just open your applications folder choose the applications you want to use and drag them into the column. I've already chosen iTunes but I would also like to add QuickTime and VLC so I'll just grab them and drag them into the column. Now we're ready to configure. Applications are configured the same way we configured the microphone. Highlight the application you want to use, click on the effects tab, click in this area here to create a new device, select 4FX effect, and auxiliary device output. Once again when the dialog box appears choose Soundflower 2 channel under device. Close the window and your application is configured. You must perform this procedure for each application you want to use. Once each application has been configured you are ready to prepare for a broadcast. You must highlight each application and your microphone source in the left hand column and turn on hijack for each one. Now we are ready to log in to Mogulus Studio and see if this works. I'm sure you all know the login drill by now. Allow Flash to recognize your camera and your microphone so you can get on with the show. Next, you either need to right click with the mouse or control click on the keyboard to bring up your flash settings again. This time, select microphone and in the menu select Soundflower 2 channel as your microphone source. Next, queue up your live broadcast and then head over to more settings. If everything has been set up correctly, you should be able to see the blue line moving in the mic level indicator. It looks like we have been successful. And I can hear audio coming from the computer behind me, which is tuned into my Mogulus channel. Next, let's see if we can hear the audio from the applications we chose. Let's start off with iTunes. You can 
can go ahead and duck the audio if you want to have some background music while you're talking. iTunes is sounding good. So let's move on to QuickTime where I have the trailer for The Watchman lined up. Finally, let's move on to VLC, where I have another movie trailer set up. This one is for the movie Year One. This summer, Columbia Pictures will take you back, way back, to the year one. Hi, Ima. Hi, Ima. Yeah, she doesn't even know I exist. There's like 60 people in the village. She, I mean... You really have to go out of your way to not know that somebody exists. Drag her back to your hut. What if she struggles? Give her a little uh, tap on the head. Ow! Women respond to that. That's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's got sort of a knowledge -y taste. Yeah, does it have a sort of forbidden taste? Because that's what it is. So, there you have it. A way to enhance your broadcast with additional audio. I think you'll find that it results very greatly using this method. I have managed to get it working on several different Macs, including a dual-core 867G4 and on a 2.4 Core 2 Duo MacBook Pro. I would say that the chances of a successful broadcast are about 3 out of 7, very good, 2 out of 7, okay, with a faint echo, and in 2 out of 7 attempts, you will encounter either runaway feedback, extreme delay, extreme echo, or any combination of these. If anyone knows any other ways to get Mac audio out onto these flash-based systems, then I think the Mac community is very interested in knowing how you do it. If you are a developer, here is a chance to create an application that would enhance the broadcasting capabilities of all Mac users involved. Macs should excel at this type of thing. Hopefully we'll see something appear in the near future. Thanks for watching.